So I recently got some new glasses and want to talk about some considerations when purchasing new glasses from a performance standpoint. So a few years ago, I went to get an eye checkup and then I went to Lens Crafters, found some frames I thought looked fine. Um, these are Burberry's, um, like the letter is, lettering has come up, but even then at the time, I was really new to glasses. I didn't really know that these weren't even technically Burberry. They're owned by Luxottica and manufactured by Luxottica. But even Oakley is technically owned by Luxottica, and that isn't necessarily a bad thing, but I'll get into that a bit. So why did I get Oakley glasses in specific instead of these glasses? Because I got my prescription from an optometrist, went to Lens Crafters, and bought these um, Burberry glasses with Lens Crafter lenses. Not anything special. So there's, these are just Lens Crafters standard polycarbonate lenses, I believe. And when I first started using them, I thought that my prescription must have been wrong or something because it just does not look that clear compared to what I was expecting or what I was having before with contact lenses. Like, even though these are technically both minus one in both eyes, the Oakley lenses are significantly clearer. I even, like, pulled up Discord and had some text on the screen, and at a distance where I could still see or read the text clearly with these lenses, I couldn't anymore with these because it was too blurry. So Oakley uses some lens material they claim is basically purified polycarbonate. So polycarbonate plus, I guess, meaning that it's impact resistant and also has better optical clarity. They have a visual demonstration of this on Sport X's channel. Polycarbonate is also a pretty uh, popular lens material that we see from a lot of competitors. It's great in the sport, sport world, but you still have issues with clarity in there. This is why we don't use just a standard polycarbonate. We use our own proprietary blend, which is known as Plutonite. So we have an Oakley Radar Lock with a Plutonite lens. Now, image did get a little bit darker, but I can add some light in the system. Very easy to see 40 lines of resolution. And yeah, the optical clarity is really something that drove me to Oakley instead of just getting standard lens crafter lenses. I wanted to see things more clearly. And the peripheral vision I'm getting on these frames is significantly greater than with these. And that's not necessarily because of the lenses, but I mean, from here I can clearly see things above the top of the frame, to the sides of the frame, even to the bottom of the frame. But these are closer to my eyes and I can even see the bottom, up, and to left and right, clearly through the actual lenses, not what's not covered by these. So. I do think factoring in peripheral vision is important if you're looking for performance because just it just feels more natural to be able to see more in your peripheral vision through your lenses than just being cut off like these. And from a looks perspective, I don't know, I think these look better, but I don't know, I got these a few years ago. I definitely think these look a bit better than my old ones. Yeah, also one thing that drew me to these is I guess that the sides are carbon fiber and it feels really lightweight. I guess it feels even lighter than these glasses. and. The plastic does make some noises. I don't know if this is necessarily because of bad quality, but these other ones I had don't really make any noises. So I don't know, maybe that's like, hopefully these don't break on me, you know, but it is like, it does feel a little bit cheap, I guess, when that happens. And yeah, also I got 1.74 high index lenses because they're thinner than the 1.5 lenses. For that difference alone, I don't really notice anything between these two, which is like 1.59, probably something around that, whatever lens crafter standard polycarbonate is. And my prescription is only minus one anyway, so the difference in thickness is not gonna be that substantial, but I wanted to go for the highest performance anyways. Also, one minor inconvenience with these is how close the lenses are to my face. For example, if I like lift them up this way, the tops of the lenses will like come against my face and then it'll add like i don't know if this will even come up in the camera i think it is coming up it'll add like smudges so i'll need to like wipe that out when that happens and with these there's a greater gap between the lenses and the frame so i can just lift them up like this and i want to get that smearing versus here i basically just need to like i don't know how it, if i like normally took them off like this before or something i would need to like take them off like that. I guess it's not that hard to adjust to, but it is something to consider. And for reflection handling, these 
standard lens crafter lenses are honestly terrible. Like, if I'm watching TV or something and a certain bright light comes on, I can see streaking, and even with, like, lights in real life, I can see, like, streaking a lot of the times with these lenses, with the Oakley lenses, with anti-reflective coating that's not there at all. Even these had anti-reflective coating, but... It's clearly far superior on the Oakley lenses. I see no streaking at all. It's essentially as good as real life. So I'm very pleased with the performance of these Oakley lenses. It looks extremely clear. I was even considering getting LASIK, but with the resolution I'm getting with these, I know I'm not even going to get that with LASIK, and it's like very satisfying to use these glasses. And, and the reason I don't use glasses in my videos often is because when I turn up my screen brightness, you can literally see the reflection, <laughs> like through my glasses and that's just like distracting I guess and yeah so for videos I'm not going to be wearing glasses unless I'm like turning down the brightness all the way to the point where you can't see my screen through my glasses so the purity of the lenses and the quality of the anti-reflective coating and application are definitely going to matter for how well your lenses perform one interesting thing I guess is barrel distortion towards the edges both of these will basically distort the image more so that it looks narrower think like I don't know the thing is though with these like on the edges yeah I can see barrel distortion and even these I can also see barrel distortion but the peripheral vision is so much greater on these that the point at which it becomes more noticeable is like further out into my peripheral vision anyways so glasses are obviously not a perfect replacement for having perfect vision but overall I prefer wearing glasses than using contacts because I don't know, I haven't really tried out the latest Intoric lenses, but for non-astigmatism lenses, I got some samples when I got these glasses, and when you first, when I first put them on, they were fine, but after like wearing them for a little bit through the day, I start seeing like double vision, then using them with my computer, I see streaking. Um, maybe this would go away with Toric lenses, I'll have to give that another try, and putting them on, taking them out, and getting dry eyes while wearing them are all just pain in the ass. It's more comfortable to wear glasses, I guess. One more thing I forgot to mention when I originally recorded this video is scratch resistance. Um, I've So I've had these glasses for a few years now, and there are quite a few scratches on the lenses. I don't know if these had a scratch resistance coating applied to them or not, but the material of these lenses, polycarbonate, is more impact resistant than glass because it's softer, but being softer also means that it's more scratch prone. So there are quite a few scratches on these. Hopefully these don't get scratched up as easily as these ones. They also have a scratch resistant coating on them, but maybe Oakley does it better, I don't know. So yeah, those are some things to keep in mind when buying glasses, I guess. From the Patreon, I'd like to give a shout out to Yuli, Felix, Mild Bill, Christopher Yu, The RFL Reaper, Tripped, Munalos, Gabby D, and Fofo. From the UT membership, I'd like to give a shout out to Castle4141, Ninjakoma3, Vsauce4, Wadeaker, and Snivery. From the Discord server, I'd also like to give a shout out to Tripped once again and Base Gamer. Thank you guys a lot for supporting the channel. Be sure to join the Apple House and Discord server if you haven't. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.